Hey everybody, so something that I've been thinking a lot about uh, recently is how we can, through our physical exam or physical evaluation, can we glean more insight into the predisposing factors that may be contributing to your knee pain or your shoulder pain, but that might actually be coming from a, uh, a different area. And a lot of this is uh, kind of for me stemmed from uh, some time I spent shadowing with uh, an MD out in Austin, Texas, uh, Dr. Brad Fullerton, who really takes this idea of biotensegrity, uh, which is a framework for how uh, our fascial system basically creates uh, potential and kinetic energy to be able to uh, to move our body through through space and. And uh, mixing this biotensegrity model with uh, the, uh, the information and framework from Tom Meyer's uh, fascial uh, anatomy trains, which is essentially uh, the, this concept that we have fascial meridians throughout our body, different connections between different things. So, for example, our, uh, the fact that our sacrotuberous ligament in the, in the low back that connects, obviously, uh, sacrum to uh, ilium, that we have this uh, this fascial connection down to the hamstrings. And um, when we see dysfunction in the sacrotuberous ligament, we can then see resulting symptoms in the actual hamstring muscle belly, which could then contribute to knee pain. And so, and so that's something that I've been <clears throat> really starting to, to dig more into is how can we use these different, this biotensegrity, this, uh, the anatomy trains concepts in our physical exam to try and improve the clinical outcomes we're seeing. Because if you look at the research on regenerative joint injections, for example, there are a few areas where the research is actually really strong uh, in terms of outcomes. Uh, knee osteoarthritis, um, tennis elbow uh, are probably the two, uh, two biggest ones. Um, and oh, we're gonna have some dogs fighting behind us here in a second. And uh, the um, outside of that, our results are not uh, where we'd like them to be. Uh, and, and sometimes I think not what we see clinically. And I think part of the reason for this is because if a patient comes in and they have a rotator cuff tear, for example, and they have shoulder pain, um, you know, there are contributing factors that are uh, part of this pain pattern are part of the predisposing uh, risk factors for having the supraspinatus at a disadvantaged position, which puts it under more load. And so in the research studies, they, they aren't really able to tease that out because then that becomes individualized medicine. And research studies where you're looking at randomized double-blind controlled trials, are, that's not individualized medicine. That's taking a group of patients that have a, have a diagnosis and fit criteria and then applying the exact same treatment with well, technically two treatments, you know, placebo and uh, the actual treatment, but applying a treatment to them. And so what if in one patient they have a, uh, just a simple supraspinatus tear, there's no real predisposing factors, not a big issue, and they get a positive response. Well, what if someone who did not have a positive response to that, it's in part because they also had changes in the, the contralateral hip. So let's say it's left shoulder, they have issues in the right hip that may not present strongly enough for them to seek treatment for, but that fascial connection from the right hip to the left shoulder could be contributing to um, their pain, their dysfunction. And so just treating the, uh, the supraspinatus tear doesn't bring that patient relief because the big picture was not addressed. And so, those are the kind of things that I'm, uh, you know, and I'm using this video to to talk through because I think there's a lot of uh, uh, power in regenerative medicine, but I believe that the uh, the biggest um, power that it has is the uh, is is the physical exam aspect is is actually determining what structure that we need to treat. And then when we go ahead and treat that with a regenerative joint injection, we have the ability to uh, potentially, you know, get patients out of pain, chronic pain that has not been addressed for a long, long time. And so 
Um, that's kind of what I just wanted to, to chat with you guys about today. Uh, I'd love to hear your, your thoughts on this or if you work in the, uh, the physical medicine uh, health space and you got uh, ideas that we could bounce off each other, I would absolutely love to hear them. All right, everyone. See you later.